and I'd like to go over some things about Supermon. So this talk is kind of going to be for four groups of people. Who is this for? Well, if, if you're never ever, you've never used All Star before, it's okay. We'll validate your parking ticket. You can go ahead and, and take a seat and enjoy the show. Maybe there's some people who are new and they want to set up Supermon for the first time. Or maybe there's some people who've used Supermon and they want to find out how it all fits together. Or maybe you want to hot rod it with some cool features. So we're going to go over a couple of different things. The recommended software, I put in the chat. What I recommend is a tool called USBIT to burn your images from the SD card. Other people use Win32 Disk Imager, Belina Etcher. There's lots of good programs out there. I happen to like US bits, so that's that. You want a tool called PuTTY for SSH control. SSH is the way you get to what you might think of as a DOS prompt. It's basically the prompt on your Linux machine. And I love a tool called WinSCP. That gives you a drag and drop file manager. It's It goes between Windows and Linux. You can edit, you can find and replace things uh, very easily. Now the purists like Odie, they're gonna wanna tell you about a tool called VI. VI is scary and frightening. Just, uh, just go with WinSCP if you can. Now one thing I'd like you to always be in the habit of doing is copy the file before you act on it. So in other words, let's say you're sitting at the root prompt right there, and it looks like this, it'll say root at, and your, your, um, your host name at the asterisk prompt, and you'll type CP as in copy, copy, say the file name, and then the file name dot saved, and hit enter, okay? And what it will do is it'll respond to you, okay, I've just copied that file, rpt.conf is now a copy called rpt.conf.saved, okay? The prompt tells you what directory you're in, but not, what, not the full path. So in other words, even if it's slash Etsy slash asterisk, it's only gonna say asterisk. There's another good, good tool in, all, in uh, Hamvoip called file-backup.sh. You can always run that. What it does is it grabs all the important asterisk and all star configuration files, wraps them up in a zip file, and puts it in your root directory that you can copy off it. You can put it on a, a flash drive. You can put it on your hard drive on the Windows. Keep a file of that off site so that anytime you mess up, you can really always roll back with that. The very best way to practice and mess up is to use USBIT. So what you do is when you've got an SD card the way you like it, you put it in your Windows PC, you run a backup of that image, in, and you can actually restore from that. So you can play, mess things up at your heart's content, and then roll back to where it was yesterday. Now, there's just a little tiny uh, thing I wanna mention. You are not copying, you are backing up, okay? You are making an entire image of your SD card. You are not copying files. Don't put your SD card in a Windows machine and be tricked into thinking you've got the whole picture because you're only gonna see 60 megabytes out of four gigs. Okay, Windows cannot see uh, Linux files. So you need to use a tool called an imager, a, a disk imager, okay? Now, every a lot of things we're talking about is taken from the site hamvoip.org, how to's. So I'm gonna put that in the chat. And I have a natural pause here. Does anybody have any questions about what I've just gone over? Okay, I'll take that as a no. All right, so to set up a node, you're gonna determine your IP address. You're gonna plug it into your router because it doesn't have the Wi-Fi yet. And you're gonna look at the green motherboard flashes. It's gonna flash out in Morse what your IP address is three times. Or you can look on your router for a device called AlarmPi, okay? Now, this is a, this is a program called PuTTY and I've logged into the device called AlarmPi at 192.168.1.55. And you're gonna to go to that address and port triple two. The default is 22, but you're gonna make it triple two. That's important, okay? So now we're sitting in a brand new 
just downloaded from the internet, Hamvoid. The first thing you're going to do is you want to do a system update. Now, I did the system update a few minutes ago, so there's nothing to do, so that's good. Now, you could change your root password, and I highly recommend doing that. We're going to talk about different passwords and what they are in a few minutes, but you shouldn't leave it to the default, which is lowercase root. Um, you can change uh, your Wi-Fi information. Uh, the Pi I'm on right now does not have Wi-Fi in it, so I can't really demonstrate that, but this is where you're going to set your Wi-Fi up. You can change the, the secure shell port. I recommend changing it away from the default triple two. They found that there's hackers that are looking for things on things ending in two, 22. So make it something else, triple three, something else. All right, we're gonna go to the bash shell interface and I'm gonna run first time uh, setup.sh. Uh, I forgot what that is. First, first time setup.sh. There we go. All right, we already did the updates, so we're going to run the first time setup. Enter a new root password. Um, now, Write that down on a sticker. You will be really messed up if you forget what your root password is, okay? Is it a private node? No, the public node number. Do you wanna set up the node configures for asterisk? Yep, okay. We don't wanna do any, uh, re, um, we don't wanna do any um, time zone setups. Host name is AlarmPod. You want to change this. I would recommend changing that to your node number. You do not want to change any network interface at this time. Okay? So, now the node is rebooting. I'm going to wait a few seconds until it comes back. Does anybody have any questions so far on what we've gone over at this point? Because we need a minute for this to boot. I'm going to suggest to you, Chris, I know what you're doing and you're too fast for me. Yeah, so we, have, we have got a lot to go through. I know I'm going to go fast. I will definitely pause. Um, but if I went at a slow pace, we'd be here till 10 o'clock. So the best thing I would do is look at the YouTube tomorrow. But I will definitely stop right now for questions. Does anybody have questions on what we've accomplished so far? Russ, do you think it would be feasible to do this in a two session, a two night yep. session then? Yep. Um, we'll we'll just we'll just see how the flow goes. All right. So I've got the node number. Put my call sign in. Do you want to report status? Yes. You want to report your status to All-Star. Do you want to use the voice ID? Sure, let it make a voice ID for me. We'll leave the default port 4569. We're going to leave all these things the same. And nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm restarting asterisk and that is really that's as fast as it can be to set up an asterisk node. I now have an asterisk node running. Okay. So um, let's talk about passwords. There are four different, at least four different passwords we're going to talk about tonight or in the second session. The root password. That is how you log on to your node and control and change everything. Do not ever lose your root password. You're going to have to start from scratch if you do. So put it on a sticker on the bottom of your node. The other password we're talking about is called manager. It's also known as a secret. Manager is what Superman or Node Remote uses to manage your all-star system. In other words, Superman is a web page. There's other programs like Node Remote. These are things that you can use in a GUI fashion, a graphical user interface to wind up changing your node connections and things like that. So that's what the manager is all about. 
And finally, the last password is called the Supermon user login. When you look at Supermon, you have almost nothing that you can do until you log in. So we're gonna set up a login user for Supermon. So to go back from the top, there are four passwords. The root password, which is only used for logging in and controlling your um, file system. The manager, which is what Supermon needs to know to con control your system. The Supermon user page itself. Those are three different passwords. And finally, you've also got the all-star password for your node. In other words, when you set up your node, the all-star system gave you a password to connect to. So I'm gonna stop right now. Are there any questions about what I went over about the four different types of passwords? Okay, I'm hearing nothing. So let's test the node at the asterisk command line menu. Let's go on and type IAX2, it's gotta be lowercase. I have a comment question. Go ahead. Uh, where maybe you want to say where you where you enter those passwords? Yes, we're getting we're going to get to that. What, what, where are you prompted for those four passwords? We're, that's coming up in the next uh, group right in here. Okay. Okay. Yep. So what you want to do is you want to test the node and make sure it's online. So at the asterisk command line menu, which is right here, asterisk CLI client. You type IAX2 space show space registry. And I see that I'm registered. So that's good. That means my node's working and I'm able to start configuring Supermon so that we know it's working. So I'm going to put that in the chat. Okay. IAX2 space show space registry. That's important. All right. So, believe it or not, your Superman is up, but you're not going to see very much. So let's go to the web page 192.168.1.55. I know that that's my page because. See it up here? It says 192.168.1.55 up here. So I go to a web page, 192.168.1.55, and I get a big old nothing burger. It just says this is a test. If you see this test, you know the web server's working. But we're on our way because we're about to start setting up Supermon. So if you type the address and then forward stroke Supermon, and I want to talk about what a forward stroke is for a second. Does everybody know what a forward stroke looks like? People often get forward strokes and backstrokes mixed up. In, in our culture, we read and write from left to right. So if you had a little man who's walking from left to right across your screen and he tripped and he fell forward, he would look like that. However, if he tripped and fell backwards, he would look like that. So that's what a back uh, backslash is and a forward slash, okay? So if you type in 192.168.1.55 forward stroke Superman, well, now we got a Superman page, okay? So we're starting. We're starting to build our Superman. There's nothing configured in it right now. You have to do some work to configure it. So at this point, I'm going to ask for questions. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done yet so far? All right, so the first thing we got to do is set up a user for Superman. Because if I'm at Superman and I click login and I put in my call sign, login failed because I don't exist yet. I've got to set myself up as a user in Superman. So here's how you do this in Putty, you're going to go. the bash cell interface, CD, change directory, to forward stroke SRV, forward stroke HTTP, forward stroke Superman. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat too. 
Okay. Once I've done that, you'll notice my prompt changes from the forward slash, which is root, to supermon. That tells me that I'm in the supermon directory, but I'm really three levels deep. So just for fun, if I want to type PWD, it'll say print working directory. It'll tell me that I am at forward stroke supermon, oh, I'm sorry, forward stroke SRV, forward stroke HTTP, forward stroke supermon. That's three levels deep in the tree. I'm going to stop right now. Does everybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Or does, it, does people have no idea what I'm talking about? Okay, so what you're going to do then is you're going to type the following. It's HTPASSWD, and it's not password, it's HTPASSWD. Okay, it's a space, it's a hyphen and a little c and a big b. It's a space, and it's the characters .htpasswd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the chat. Let's find it. There we go. This is how you start setting up your username. You type htpasswd space hyphen little c big b space dot httpasswd and then you put in a call sign or a username now that username could be joe it could be w2pw it could be admin it could be god with a lowercase g it doesn't matter what that username is okay so here we go we're going to go httpasswd space forward stroke little c big b space dot httpasswd and i'm going to put my call sign in as a username what's my password what's my password again i've now added a password for user w2pw now we're going to try to log in we're going to type w2pw we're going to type the password i chose we're going to click login, and now we're logged in. But it doesn't look that impressive yet. But the difference is this thing up here says log out. Okay. If it said log in, sorry, password failed, we're not logged in yet. But now that we've got a user for Supermon, now we're going to configure your Supermon. I'm going to stop right now. Are there any questions? Because one of the fellows asked where we set those darn passwords up. Hey, Pros. Yep. Are there any restrictions for the passwords? Length, complexity, that, that kind of stuff? Not that I know of. And one of the nice things is you can have multiple users and multiple passwords. So if your web page was publicly viewable, you could give out to folks in your club different usernames and logins. Okay? Now, the next time you add a user, you're only going to put a hyphen B. You're not going to do a hyphen little c big B. You're just going to go hyphen B. Okay. But it's the same process here, except the it's a hyphen big B. Okay. Now we're going to set up the manager. Now, manager is what Supermon uses to control your node. So we're going to be in two different places at once. We're going to open up WinSCP and we're going to go to Etsy asterisk manager.conf, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, now the reason the reason I got hung there is because I changed my root password. So when SCP realized that, and it may be log in again, which is nice. Okay, now over here on the right, this double dots. Are going up a level so in other words if you see here it says srv http ls nodes i go up a level i'm at srv http up another level i'm at srv and up at the top level i'm at what's called root these are all the root directories um, and an asterisk lives in etsy asterisk 
So Etsy asterisk is where you're going to be messing around. You're going to go into Etsy asterisk and look for the file called manager.conf. Is everybody cool with what I did so far? Okay. So I'm going to look for manager.conf. And I'm going to say, all right, I got to make a couple of changes here. This semicolon is what's called a comment. That means ignore this line. I'm going to remove that semicolon and I'm going to enable this to be used over the web. The default is Superman, uh, the manager is enabled, but it's not enabled for the web. So now I'm going to enable that. We're going to leave the port alone. And here's another important change. We're going to put a semicolon in front of the top line and get rid of the one on the bottom. Meaning, I'm going to change from find address is 127001, which means local interface only. I'm going to enable that for 0.0.0.0, which means everybody can view it. Which means you can, you, you can view your Supermon from your laptop across the room. If you didn't do that, you'd only be able to do it on the very machine that you're working on. So that's an important change. So you change two things. You get rid of the semicolon in front of web enabled equals yes, and you get rid of the semicolon in front of bind ADDR 0000, and you put it in front of the top one. One more thing we got to do. This is the secret. This is where we put the manager password in. Okay? So you're going to type any password you want. It's really only between your Superman and your manager. If you want to make it some really crazy secure password, you can feel free to do that, but you got to remember what that is. One other little thing. Notice that there is a space between the word secret and the equal sign and the actual password. I take my cue from the fact that the line below it also has a space around the equal sign. So it's important to kind of follow along what they did, okay? Now that I've made my changes, I can either click the save button or I can press escape and it's gonna prompt me to save. Either way, I've done my save. So this is, this is what we just did, okay? We've gone into WinSCP. We've modified Etsy asterisk manager.conf. We've changed web enabled to yes and we've allowed 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. I'm gonna put those in the chat too. Sort of putting the important steps in there, okay? Now we've gotta go over to Supermon and we've gotta tell it what password we used. So, Supermon lives at Superman lives up a level, up a level to the top, down in SRV, down in HTTP, down in Superman, and allmon.ini. So, we are in this step right here. And I'm going to put that in the chat. Before I go on, is everybody comfortable with what we've done so far? Are you hanging on by the skin of your teeth? We got a lot of information. We're going fast, but okay. Is everybody unmuted so that they can say, uh, or can, can Mike, can you maybe watch all the participants and say, start, start waving or something? Cause I can't see them with the, with the sharing. Uh, uh, uh. We got an, uh, they can unmute themselves. Okay. If you got a question, unmute yourself and go, Hey, all right, so. I have nothing pressing. Okay, I see what you did there, Jeff. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna change this 1998 here to your node number. All right, and the, the, the user admin, this is the one that refers to the manager. So we have um, PASSW0RD as my um, not so, secret password here. But you also want to change every instance of 1998 in this file to your node number. So what I can do is I'll show you a neat little trick that WinSCP does. If you hit Control-H, it will find and replace. 
So we're going to find every instance of 1998 and make it my node number. Replace all, found two. Start from the top, found one more, okay? So now I've got 409813, which is my node in my allmon.ini. If I save that and I go back over to this and I refresh, now you see my node number shows up here. And I click on that. And lo and behold, I literally have my Superman working at this point. The way I know it's working is I did not get an error here that said could not connect to Asterisk Manager. It actually says no connections. This no connections refers to do I have all-star connections active right now, and I do not. So once we put in allmon.ini, we put this, and we put the password. And under all nodes, we also put that in. You're going to find that even putting all nodes is going to show up with 409813. Okay? Now, down here where it says menu equals yes, if you change that to menu equals no, notice here I've got IRLP status. There is no need to have IRLP status because we've been fired from IRLP land, so there's no need to have IRLP there. But so what I did was I just took this yes and I turned it into a no. I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna refresh it, and IRLP status disappears. Does everybody follow what I did? I removed one of these links up here, okay? Now, perhaps I'd like to instead have an East Coast reflector link. So I could type in the name here, ECR, and change this to East Coast Reflector.com. Checking my spelling, making this a yes. Now we're going to watch right here when I refresh it. Hit save, refresh it again. We now have a link to the ECR. So that's how you add and subtract links in this bar up here. Does everybody follow what I did so far? Any uhs? Okay, let's just test it. Is that the same place you would add if you wanted to add something like a um, an echo link up there too or no? Yep. Um, let's talk about echo link for a second. Echo link you would typically want to launch on your 1999 node. That's my that's my opinion. Some people put echo link on their main node. I like to put it on my 1999. The reason being that I don't want to have echo link people connecting and being automatically on the East Coast reflector. So this 1999 thing here, see it's private node 1999. is where my echo link would be. Now I notice it says could not connect, could not log into asterisk manager. You see that error? When I went in 409813, I'm happy, happy. It says no connections, but that's not the word connect is not the same guys here. No connections here means I'm not connected to any reflectors. But 1999, when I go there, it says could not connect to asterisk manager. Uh-oh, that's one of my errors. How do we solve that? Well, let's look back in allmon.ini. Notice on my 1999, I do not have a password. Okay? So I'm just going to copy this password because it's the same manager, paste it there. I'm going to save it. I'm going to refresh this page. And now it says no connections which is a lot happier than could not connect to asterisk manager. Does everybody follow what I did? I added a second node and I put the proper password in and now I've built two different nodes on my screen. Any, any vomits or oohs? Are we good? So you're saying that the, first, the uh, two node numbers that you have, the 
09 and the 1999 are reflectors and everything else are bookmarks. I no, e no, not e quite. Are these, bookmarks. these are nodes, but yes, these down here are kind of like bookmarks. Okay, right. these are links. Right. But up here, right. this is my node 409813 and my other node 1999, and they're both inside my own pie here. Yep. Now, notice this says 127.0.0.1. If this was a node off-site or in a different pie in another room, public IP, we <laughs> would put the private or public IP there. So, for example, if I wanted to control a node literally in another room or same room, whatever, I might put 192.168.1.34 instead of 127.0.0.1. Right. But in this particular case, I'm in the same pie, so I use 127.0.0.1. So, right now, we've got a pretty well populated almond.ini. Now, these things right here are simply informational files. They can appear in any order you want whatsoever. They do not have to be in numerical order, ascending or descending. You could put a bunch more, okay? And as long as those informational files are present, then you will be able to see them on your Superman page. Does everybody follow what I did so far? Right now we've got a pretty, pretty active Superman page going. We've got our login, log out experience. We've got our all nodes. In which case we are looking at my, you know, my two nodes, my 409813 and my private node 1999. We got a crap load of buttons here to play with. Let's try logging out. Oh, the buttons go away. Oh, what happened to my buttons? One of the guys about an hour ago said, where's my favorites? I can't remember where my favorites are. Well, I got a pretty good hint. I bet you're logged out at the time. So let's log back in. And if I let the browser save my password, it'll save that for me. Click log in. Ooh, now I got buttons. Okay. Lots and now lots press, and lots of buttons. Press. Yes. A guy like yourself that has several different ones of these packages here, you could actually put them all up on the one thing or? Exactly. Exactly. So let me show you. Chris, is there a button available to shut down? You know, there isn't. And um, I'm looking to find, somebody did it. There's a button to reboot, but I'm gonna show you a shortcut on how to properly shut down. Remind me to do that at the end of the talk, okay? You did that for me. Yeah. So this is this is the hub, which has 465710, four, 465711, these are both inside the same pie, but also I had 4098, uh, 40980. So let's put that in here. 40980. See, now I'm actually looking at a totally offset, off site node. This node right here is not inside my own pie, but I can see it and control it because I put that information in all mon.ini. So yes, you can have in your Supermon, you could have your own stuff, you could have other people's stuff if they give, give you permission. You could have your other stuff down the hall. There's lots and lots of things that you can do. Is there any questions so far on what we went over? Now, let's see where we are. So we talked about setting up the manager. We talked about setting up the users in Supermon. We talked about the allmon.ini where you add the node information for Supermon. I said that the nodes in there do not have to be in any particular order. However, there is one link in there called all nodes. Let's look at that. See the one down here called all nodes? That is where you can put them in order.
I'm just doing something silly right here. I'm putting over and over the same node just to show you what would happen. Okay. Now we've got 813 and 1999. If I go to all nodes now, if I refresh this page, I got lots of nodes. <laughs> They're all the same, but that's how you actually make your all nodes give you the different nodes. And this, in this particular case, order matters. Okay. So for example, if I did, if I did 1999, then 409813, does anybody guess what would happen? The private would come up first. Shout them out. What's going to happen is, uh, I got to, I got to, hit a hard refresh here you got to shift refresh all nodes where's all nodes there we go now 1999 is on top and the main nodes main nodes on the bottom we're affecting this all nodes link right here so basically the order that you put in there is what's going to happen in what order on all nodes now i'm going to throw a curveball at you what happens if we put a node number in here Okay, I've put a new node number in here, 40980. Does anybody guess what's gonna happen if I put a node number in all nodes, but didn't put the login information in there? It won't be able to log in. Yep, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a, a bummer here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on all nodes. It simply says, warning, node 40980 not found in our allmon.any file. It doesn't even try, it gives you a warning. So if you see that warning, that's your cue to go, wait a second, let me look at my allmon.ini and see if I'm calling for a node that doesn't exist in this list up here, okay? So if I get rid of that dummy erroneous node, save it, go back over here, click on all nodes, uh, shift. You sometimes have to hit shift to refresh. Now that error is not there anymore. All nodes just gives me what I asked for in the first place. Okay. So that's a lot of what we got going on in allmon.ini. Does anybody have any questions on what we've covered out so far? No, except that you didn't really uh, touch on echo link, how you would put that in. But I guess that I is with... that is literally a whole nother topic. Why don't we hold that for another night? Okay. No problem. All right. Now, press, let me ask you a question. Yes. I, you know, from a 30,000 foot view, just describe Superman. It's a GUI to control one or more nodes. Exactly. I couldn't put it better myself. Okay. So, and here's where I'm having a hard time. I just saw one of your GUIs had like 19 nodes on there. Right. How is that? How are you using it like that? In allmon.ini, what I would do is I would add no, information. No, 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 no. I didn't ask you how you set it up. Okay. I asked you, you, you have already set it up. How are you using it? Why is it good to have all those nodes on one GUI? Because if you have like uh, WA5AIR in Texas, he's got a crap load of notes, okay? I got a crap load of notes. It's nice to be on one web page and be able to control them all. So the Supermon, for example, right here, let me go ahead and log in just so it looks a little bit more realistic. See, I got all the buttons. I've got Node 465710, which is my Great South Bay hub. Mm -hmm. I got Node 465711, which is my WRTUHF hub. I've got 1999, which is my Echolink node. I got 465712, which is another hub. And literally, if I had put in this shortcut up here, 40980, I can now see a completely different off-site node, not inside this pie at all, but I can control it. Well, is it more monitoring than control? Well, you know, right now, you see this blue line, the blue line right here? 
That yeah. means the, the East Coast is, is yapping, okay? If I transmitted, then this would turn, if I was transmitting into this very node itself, it would turn green and say COS detected. Yeah. So you can see what's on the air at the time. Also, the active node floats to the top, okay? So, Glenn, if you've got your if you've got your push to talk button handy, let's do a little demonstration here. Look in this area right here. Glenn, push your push to talk button. Okay, WB2QDS. See, he just popped to the top. But yeah. East Coast talked a tenth of a second after him, so it popped him down one. But the most recently active node will float to the top. Okay? Yeah. You can also glean some information such as, oh, let's say receive, okay? That means it's been 10 minutes since the last reception from that node. The link is established. The direction is in. That means this node, this node has an incoming call. Perhaps it might say out. That means this node made an outgoing call instead, okay? Connected time, 9 hours, 31 minutes, 41 seconds. So it'll tell you how long the connection is. It says mode, transceive. If it was in monitor only, it would say receive only. So there's a lot of things that you can glean just by glancing at your dashboard, and that's why it's worth making a nice uh, Superman dashboard. Okay, very good, thank cool? you. Okay, now, let's see where we are. All right, we are now at the point where we're gonna step into Superman 102. So I'm gonna stop, Take a, a take a, a one minute breather, and I want to ask if anybody has any questions on what we've gone over. Preston, I've got a question for you. Oh, go ahead. When you're setting up Supermon and you're showing all those nodes that you're controlling, are right. they all ham void nodes, or are some of them regular asterisk nodes? Good question. They can be asterisk nodes as well. Because the asterisk system has a manager just like Hamvoip does. In fact, Hamvoip is closer to asterisk than a lot of people realize. It's just that there's a lot of tweaks and improvements and customizations in Hamvoip. But I could put an asterisk node in there, all right, in my allmon.ini, which would appear. You now you would you would do like another paragraph like this. We might say uh, one, uh, whatever. Node one, two, three, four, five, six, and that one is located at one, two, three, four, five, six dot asnode dot org. I'm making that up, but that's their address. It's using the standard five zero three eight, and their admin password is this is new. Okay, that's all I have to do to add. One, two, three, four, five, six to my bouquet of things that I can view and control. However, you have to have the secret void. If you don't have the secret void, you're not going to get in and control that node. So that node owner has to share with you. He says, say, look, my 5038 port is open from the outside. My admin password is this is new. My node number is this, blah, blah, blah. And then if you save this file, you would, and, and, and you put it here under all nodes, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, now, lo and behold, that's going to be available to you to control and see. Cool? Okay. Yeah, okay. I was just trying to make sure that I could control a standard asterisk node with Supermon. I'll go you one better. You know how some people are doing uh, a version of asterisk in the GMRS world? Yes. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But okay. if you have if you have the credentials, if you know what the what the IP is, either inside or outside, if you know what their port is, if you know what their secret void is, you can control their node. Which is why you don't want to be putting this stuff out unless you want somebody to have it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Now. Um, Let's talk about making it a little prettier because right now we've got your call, we've got your location. Let's, we've got this guy's backyard. Why don't we talk about making it a little more, a little more pretty, a little bit, um, you know, 
more customized, okay? So we're gonna talk about changing the background picture, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a concept called a symlink trick. What that means is a, 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 a picture, say it's called otherpick.jpg, all right? It's gonna to point to and refer to under background.jpg. So currently, I'm gonna show you right now, background.jpg is not a real file. It actually points to the file called capecoralyard.jpg. In other words, capecoralyard.jpg, that's the file in this wide picture. Background.jpg is simply an alias, is an alias that gets you to capecoralyard.jpg. So I've got another file in here called Panorama Distant Planet System. So I'm gonna copy the name of that. I'm gonna go into background.jpg. I'm gonna hit Alt F6 in my um, WinSCP. And I'm gonna point background.jpg instead of Cape Coral Yard, it's now pointed to another file, which looks like this. So you can put your own background in Supermom. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on what I talked about so far? Changing the background picture. A little advanced, but it's I showed you what could be done and we can we can go over it again. So we did all we did adding links to the banner. We did Supermom to control other nodes. We changed the background picture. What we should do though, is we should deal with this, your location and your call, because that's not really customized. So I'm gonna go into global.inc, and that's where you change the parameters, like your call. See where it says your call up there? I'd rather it say W2PW. So that's where you stay within the quotes, and you say W2PW. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna refresh it. It now says W2PW. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. But your location, let's add a location. All right. Uh, how do you spell patch a hoe? All right. Yeah. Location's Patchogue, New York. Okay, cool. All right. Now, the second line of the header Raspberry Pi two or three node. Let's say uh, we make it a cool node because it's really cool, right? So now we refresh. It says RPI two and three cool node. All right, so we're starting to customize and have some fun here. Now, let me show you what goes on here. Background image, you specify the background image which is background.jpg. However, a few minutes ago, we talked about creating an alias from background.jpg to cool uh, panorama planets or Cape Coral Yard. But if I was to make this go away by using a pair of forward strokes, if I made it gone, then it's gonna make the background blue. I'll show you that right now. Background's blue. So why would you want to have a background be blue instead of a pretty picture? Well, if you have three or four different Supermons in your life that you're working on, not multiple nodes inside one Supermon, but literally a bunch of other Supermons, you might want to have one be green, one be blue, one be red. It just helps you remember. But if I go back in here and I leave the background picture as background.jpg, now we're back to our picture and let's go back and let's go into this background thing and make it back to Cape Coral Yard so I can show you how it gets back. I'm going to copy the name of the file. I'm going to go into the background. I'm going to make it say Cape Coral Yard.jpg. All right. Now I'm going to refresh. And it's the backyard again. So you can change your image. They've got some really cool panoramic pictures out there. I've got a beautiful desert sunset. I've got some, you know, some wide mountains. I've got a beach. 
anything can be put in that background right here. You can also put your call sign, your location, what the type of uh, system it is. Now notice it says All Star IRLP Echolink System Manager. Well, we mentioned before we don't have IRLP anymore. So what we do is we get rid of the word IRLP. Save it. Refresh it. It now says All Star Echolink System Manager. It doesn't say All Star IRLP Manager. Oh, one more thing we want to we want to do down here. It says System Maintained by Your Name, W2PW. So. System maintained by your name, press. Save that, refresh it. Now down here it says system maintained by press, W2PW. Okay, so at this point we have fully configured our Supermon. It does everything we need to do. Now I'm gonna talk a few minutes about favorites and things like that because somebody asked about that before. Once I'm logged in, I can get to my favorites page. But what it says is I got to edit favorites.ini to add content. My favorites are basically blank. They're waiting to be filled in. Okay. So how do we do that? Back in WinSCP, we're going to go to favorites.ini. And remember, all these semicolons are what's called comments. That means they are ignored. So what we're going to do is we're going to unignore them. I'm going to get rid of the semicolon in front of this, 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 and this. I'm just going to save that for now and show you what happens. Okay, now I go into favorites. All of a sudden we got some favorites. Okay. So that's how you add, that's how you enable favorites that are hidden. Next, we're going to talk about adding a favorite that doesn't exist whatsoever, okay? Let's say we don't care about the wind system, but we do want to have a link to the Great South Bay Amateur Radio Hub. So you might change this label to GSB ARC Hub, and then you might change this node number from 2560 to 465710, and then we want to uncomment them so that they're being used again. Now this used to say win system. Now we're going to hit uh, favorites and it says GSBARC hub. So we've, we've edited a currently existing favorite. We've changed it into something else. We've also enabled a bunch of favorites that are sitting there that were not enabled from, from factory. Okay. Now, when I go into favorites, I choose the I choose the favorite, I click connect, and lo and behold, I am connected. Okay? So now it says I'm connected to the Gizbark hub. I've never received a call from them, but the link's established. It's an outgoing connection. I've had it for 20 seconds, and it's in transceive. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about the difference between transceive and monitor. Let's say you're new and you're a little nervous about connecting to a big system and you don't want to accidentally transmit, you just want to lurk and listen. So then all you have to do is put in 27339 monitor, okay? Oops, I meant to do it on this one, 27339 monitor. And let me disconnect that. And now what we're doing is this, this node is receive only. That means we can hear East Coast traffic, but we will not accidentally transmit into the East Coast. Okay? Does everybody follow what I did so far? All right, now I'm gonna do something dumb, okay? I'm gonna connect my node to 465710, Whoa, whoa, what, 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 what happened? I got two connections. I've got the Great South Bay Hub in Transceive, and I've got the East Coast Reflector in Receive Only. What's that? 
Remember, All-Star is a level playing field. There are no such things as nodes and hubs, hubs or nodes, nodes or hubs. They're all the same thing. So your little node can actually act as a hub and tie systems together. You want to see a, you want to see a move that will cause Dick to crab a pickle? You put in the wind system up here and connect them while it's connected to the East Coast Reflector. And guess what you did? You've crossed the streams. You've put two entire universes through your living room. And that is what we call a bad thing. So whenever you go to connect, always think about it. In fact, on one of my pages right here, it says, think before you link. With great power comes great responsibility. Do not cross the streams. What I'm saying there is always disconnect before you connect unless you actually intend to do that. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to know up here, all right, I've got a connection to uh, East Coast. i got a connection to Gizbar Hub. Let me disconnect it. So how do you do a connect and a disconnect? Well, this box up here is called the connect box. You're going to do a lot of work in this connect box, okay? Now, you can either manually type something in where you say 27339 and you click disconnect, or I'll show you something even cooler. Watch down here. If I click on this number right here, it pre-fills it for me up here. So I can click disconnect. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, now I've only got one connection. I've disconnected from the GSBARC hub. I'm still connected to 27339. And by the way, I'm in receive only. Now, receive only again means you can hear them, they can't hear you. But you can change on the fly from receive only to transceive. So if you hear something interesting and you want to pop in and add something, you, they can't hear you. You can simply connect. Say that, click connect, and it converts into transceive. So now they can hear you, you can hear them. Does anybody have any questions on what we've gone over so far? It's a lot. We've spent an hour and we've gone through a lot of stuff. Let me look at my notes here. So we did links to the banner. We did, okay, we did super monocanola nodes, change background picture. All right. Would anybody like to talk about how somebody outside of your house can look at your supermon? Like, for example, if, if I want to look at my K2CMT supermon and he allowed it, I can put that in all Mike has to do is to forward in his router, forward an external port, like let's say 50,000 to 80 on his Pi. And then when I'm from outside, if I go to Mike's node number, got asnode.org, colon 50,000, Bob's your uncle, I'm looking at his node. If he gave me a login uh, name, I could literally log in and control his node. So it is possible to control and view a node, uh, a Superman page, outside of your house. That's a little, this is a little hairy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip on that. All right, so let's, let's close this up by reviewing error messages and what to do, okay? If it says, warning, node number, blah, 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 not found in our Allmon any file, what that means is you have not hit, you have not put the information in allmon.ini. Okay, so you've tried to call for a note that didn't have this informational file in there. That's what it means. Warning, node, not, da, 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 not found in all on any file. Okay, let's talk about another thing. You must be logged in to use this function. What that probably means is you've rebooted your Pi, but you forgot to refresh your page on your browser. And because it does not automatically refresh, your browser thinks it's logged in and your Pi thinks it's not which is why you get that you must be logged in. So all you have to do to solve that is you simply click the login 
the log out uh, button, it'll say log in and then you proceed to log in again and that'll straighten that whole thing right out. So you must be logged in to use this function it means you're accidentally not logged in and you're trying to do something you don't have rights to do. What happens when I try to log in and, and oh, nothing happens? Sorry, login failed or it just rejects you. Well, you probably typed your username and then the password and pressed enter. What I found when I'm logging in, let me log out, okay, and then go to log in again, W2PW, put my password in and hit enter. Login failed. Oh crap, that's not nice. Let me try again. Put my name in, put my password in, and click log in. Well, lo and behold, I logged in. So what I found is putting your username and then your password in and pressing enter does not work out so well. I think you need to click on login. Also, older Microsoft browsers don't work at all. You cannot log in. It'll act like it's working, but you can't log in. Use Chrome or Firefox. Now, I think the newest Edge is built on Chromium, so it may work, but older MS browsers will simply not log in. Okay? Any questions on what I went over so far? All right, could not connect to Asterisk Manager. That down here, if it says could not connect to Asterisk Manager, that means your manager name, which is always admin in manager.com, has no proper password set up. You did not remember to set the password up. Or you don't have a password in your alma on any that matches the secret in manager conf. So essentially what that's telling you is Superman cannot figure out how to work your all-star system. Look for a disagreement between your allmon.ini and your manager.com. Those are two things that have to kind of match. Or you've got the wrong port. Like let's say your manager is looking on port 5037 but your allmon.ini is saying, I want to go to 5038, that's not going to work. So it's it's either it's a port issue or a password and login pa uh, password uh, disagreement. Where's my favorites? Well, significantly more buttons are available when you're logged in. We talked about, we showed that there before. Now, this is not really an error, but people say, what's the difference between Superman 2 and Superman? They're actually both nice. And they can coexist on your same box as long as they're in different directories. But you'll find that uh, Superman is left-hand justified. Superman 2 is centered. Superman has more IP information. Superman 2 has different buttons. I say try them both. They're kind of cool. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on what we've gone over so far? Because we're kind of about to wrap it up. All right, uh, Dick, can I make a shameless plug for something that I provide for people? Sure. Thank no, you. No if you'd like to have a nifty, nifty, nifty landing page like this that has Superman or bubble chart, so you've got actually the Superman on one side and let's log in here. A bubble chart's on the right. Get back that, will it refresh? Or you want to have Superman and Pystar side by side. These are some nifty um, web pages and things like that that I wrote. What I do is I provide a, a device called Hamvoit Premium HDMI. What that means is you're going to get an LED which blinks different colors. That LED is going to be blue for network, meaning your Wi-Fi is connected. You don't have to wonder. It's going to give you a connection count, which means if you're connected to three things at once, it's going to wink out three times. Stay blue, wink out three times. Very nifty. It show you your TXRX status. It does provide the WA3 DSP shutdown switch. You can properly shut down your node. It gives you a really nice landing page. 
like uh, this. Um, it gives you the um, bubble chart on the right and the connections on the left. So right now you can see in one view, you can see your Superman here and your bubble chart on the right of what all your connections are. Um, it gets, so we talked about the Pi star on the right. We got the bubble chart on the right. Um, host name resolution. That means you don't have to know what your IP is. On most routers, you can just type in your node number dot local, like one, two, three, four, five, six dot local. It'll take you there. Automatic port forwarding tool for incoming calls and support, meaning you could take incoming uh, all star calls and not have to worry about how you port, port forward your router. It'll say hello when you get a connection, so you know somebody connected to you. The best part is that you can connect it up to a TV or monitor, and you can see or listen to your Supermon right on a big widescreen TV. That's something you don't get with, with Hamvoid. You just get a, a DOS prompt that. You can listen to the audio on your, um, on your node on the amplified speakers. You've got volume controls in the Supermon. You got repeaterisms, which are fun little tidbits that will play uh, guides on how to use a repeater uh, as if they were coming down from on high. Uh, the WA3 DSP Newsline and ARRL News Scripts, all built in. And what that runs is, it's 125 plus shipping. You get the image completely prepared for you to put into your uh, Pi. You can burn it at home. You also get, as an East Coast Reflector special, a free mic. So if you've got an MPOW headset, you can use a, a push to talk experience on there. And that's 125. Or if you want to do a, a big old upgrade, you can get a seven inch LCD touchscreen display. So what you're going to get is your Pi is going to go into this LCD display. You can push on it as a touchscreen and work your Superman. And of course, you also get the LED in the software. And that's an ECR special for 200. This works radioless or with the Sherry or the hotspot radio box. All you have to do is solder one LED in or your, your radio interface. So that's available to East Coast Reflector people. It's a, it's a complete, re it's a lot of features on top of the Hamvoid. Mostly it's the, the desktop that you can view on your TV. Um, it's the uh, bubble charts. The Pi Star is really nice. If you have um, a Pi Star in your house, uh, you can see both your Pi Star and your Hamvoid on one page. So you could log in and control your Pi Star on the right and your Hamvoip on the left. And uh, a lot of cool features. Now, does anybody want something for free? Sure. Okay, here's free. I'm gonna show you something right here. When you go to, when you go to um, the, the IP address of the, of the node, it just sits there. But if you went to this node, for example, it automatically forwards you. So if you put this code in your index.html, if you forget to write stroke Superman, it will forward you to your Superman page. And I will put that code in the chat box. So what you're gonna do is you're going to copy your index.html as a save. So in other words, you're gonna you're gonna save the original index.html and then you're gonna replace the contents of index.html with this little code snippet. And what it'll do is when you land on your when you land on your page and forget to type forward stroke supermon, it'll take you right to your supermon. Don't forget to Brian? custom the title. What? Don't forget to customize the title. No, I like my name up there. Why <laughs> should other people have it? <laughs> you can customize anything you want. Okay, does anybody have any questions on what we've gone over? Because we covered a lot. When's the test press? Uh, it's already it's already been uh, handed out. Take your piece of paper, turn it over, and write your name on the back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that happened to me once in, in, in I think in college. They handed out absolutely blank copy paper. Everybody got a sheet of paper, and they said, "Now on the back, write your name." 
Half the people actually turned it over and wrote their name on the. Okay. <laughs> Open for general questions. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Other yes, than, go ahead. Uh, the justification issue, is there any functional difference between Supermon and Supermon 2? It kind of, you can customize the data uh, panel with temperature information and weather and stuff. I assume you can do that with both of them, right? 